Yeah, so we're going to identify when the Fisher transform is greater than 1 and less than 1.1. So greater than 1.0 and less than 1.1. So since we're looking for, you know, specific values of an oscillator, we're going to use the threshold solver to do that. All right, so this um, threshold solver is going to be looking for uh, values greater than 1.0 or less than negative 1.0. All right, so let's plug in the Fisher transform here. All right, there it is. Plug it in. Um, of course, I'm just using the, the default period of 10. And the Fisher transform only has one plot. So it, right, it's already selected for us. There we go. All right, so now we need to go into the, the threshold settings. Right? And so here, we're looking for the Fisher transform to be greater than or equals. You know, I, I, we should include the equals there of one, right? Uh, right, and that's for a long, so for a short signal, if the Fisher transform is less than or equal to negative one, right? Hit okay. All right, there we go, right? So anytime it's greater than one, no problem. So now we need to set uh, a limit there so that, you know, as long as it's, you know, less than 1.1. So let's see here. Let's make a copy of this and let's paste it down there. All right. So this time we're looking for right the uh, Fisher transform to be less than 1.1 or greater than negative 1.1. So let's let's go and set up the threshold settings here for that. All right, so for a long, this time it needs to be less than or equal to 1.1. This time, so for the short, it needs to be greater than or oh, there we go, greater than or equal negative 1.1. Uh, of course, you know, the output's going to look a little crazy here, but right, whenever that, whenever the Fisher transform is less than 1.1, right, we're getting all these long outputs. And so we want where these two outputs intersect, right? We want the intersection of those. And so that is where a AND node comes in play, right? So we need both of these conditions true at the same time. And there we have it. So there we go. We have one bar there. And we have one bar there. Right. Otherwise, yeah, the Fisher transform there is not hitting that one value all that often. Yeah, and there we go. So there's one. And there's another one there. All right. So, yeah, so let me go, go back to the Q&A window there. Yeah, so the entries would be one and then the exit would be three. Uh, so, okay. Just kind of cleaning up the Q&A window a little bit there. Okay, so there's our entry signals. Um, all right, whenever, you know, so you can go, obviously you can go in here and you can define, you know, the range of where that Fisher transform, excuse me, needs to be in, right, to, give you that long signal or short signal you know so obviously so if you want to widen it a little bit to maybe 0.9 you know to 1.1 right you could then just go into the one solver there right and you can you know adjust things maybe to 0.9 um, to negative 0 0.9 right something like that right so you can easily go in there and adjust those numbers 
to you know increase or decrease that range that you're looking for uh, for that entry for that entry value of the Fisher transform and then um, the exit signals is um, the same thing here let's see the exit of three all right yeah so I'm assuming that probably any value greater than three is probably um, an, an exit or less than negative three for an exit so let's see here so let's yeah so I'm gonna make a copy of this solver here right because this solver is looking for a value greater than one and so if the exit um, you know is greater than three and actually okay so Kenny's saying yeah so make it three to 3.6 okay all right so we're gonna yeah so the exit is going to be range bound from 3.0 to 3.6 so all right so we won't yeah so we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually make a an entire copy of this logic template here so we're going to copy this make a copy of it there you go here's our copy and then all right, so the exit is going to be three. And let's just kind of shorten that up a little bit. All right, to 3.6 there. Uh, let's see here. So actually, um, I need to make copies of these, right? I don't want to modify these because these are actually the same these are the same solver as the entry signals, right? So I actually need to make copies of these. Let's make a copy. And let's paste those down here. There we go. So we can see on the solvers list, right? I have the ones for the entries. And now I have copies that I can modify for the exits, right? So let's get rid of those first ones. There we go. Move these up there. Connect those in. All right, so there I modified the name. So we're looking for greater than 3.0, right? Or less than negative 3.0. Let's go in and adjust the threshold settings. Yeah, all right, let's put those exit values in there. Like so, all right, done. And the next one, right? Let's set the upper limit here. All right, there you go. So I have the name adjusted. And so now let's go into the threshold settings and adjust those values. All right, so 3.6 and negative 3.6 and apply. And let's see, yep, there we go. So we do have some exits right there. So there we have it, pretty simple and straightforward. So if you're looking for, you know, uh, specific values coming from your oscillator, yeah, you would just use two threshold solvers, right? The first threshold solver you know, it's going to set the lower limit. And then the second threshold solver would set the upper limit, you know, of that range, you know, that ranged value that you're looking for from your indicator. Oh, and boy, oh boy. I, I made a, a major oversight here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, on the exits, Look at the exits there. Um, where's the exits? There we go. There's our exits. So yeah, major oversight here. So right, when we're in a short trade, your exit needs to be a long output or a long signal, right? But I just kind of kept going with my entry signals there. So I actually need to, uh, reverse everything here 
Um, yeah, I need to reverse everything within the settings here. So, all right. Uh, so I need a short when greater than or equal to three. And then I need a long when uh, less than, yeah, negative three. So less than or equal to negative three, right? So you can see I just, right, I reversed the condition and I reversed the values there. So hit okay there. And then let's go into the next threshold solver and do the same thing, reverse everything, right? So uh, this needs to be greater than, this one needs to be less than, and then I need to reverse the um, negative symbol. There, like so. All right, there we go. That's better. So there. So once that transform gets down to the negative three territory, right, we're getting a long output, you know, to exit any possible short position, short trade that, you know, that might be in. So there we go. Let's see. All right, here we go. So we have a, a long signal there. And then the exits, there you go. And so the exit would be right there. All right, so there you go, Kenny.